Greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Lady Carolyn Vinson bringing you greetings from Apostle Thomas H. Vinson and the beautiful High Point Christian Tabernacle family. Now, High Point is located right here in the city of Smyrna, Georgia at 3269 Old Concord Road. Now, as you know, we are now worshiping virtually due to the COVID crisis. Yet we are pleased to be able to come into your homes to bring you a word from the Lord. And we sincerely hope that you are being blessed, healed, and delivered. Amen. We're soon hoping that God will lift this pandemic and that we'll be able to worship live in our sanctuary again. But until then, and for the next few weeks, join us as we revisit some of our services that were held inside our beautiful sanctuary in years gone by. Amen. We know that these services will bless your heart. Amen. And that the preach word will continue to yet be relevant. Now let's go into a service that's already in progress. You won't praise God. Huh? You, you are, are the lifter, lifter <laughs> of my, of my, my head. head. Say it to the Lord again. You are the lifter. You, you are, are the lifter. lifter. Oh, you are the lifter. You, you are, are the lifter. Oh, I, of my, my I still gotta praise you. Thank you for lifting me. Thank you for lifting. Let's take it up. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Right here. My head. Now let's show the Lord we're thankful. We're gonna give our all. Hallelujah! Oh, 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 hallelujah! Oh, la 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 ba shame! Hallelujah! Oh, la 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 ba shame! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I don't feel that to keep going. I'm on Sunday. Come on, let's just give God a keep up on Sunday. A great praise in His place. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Help me say, oh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me.
bless the Lord at all times. You've done for me. And his praise is just continually. You've done for me. And his praise is just continually. You've done for me. And his praise is just continually. You've done for me. We will bless the Lord. You've done for me. We will bless the Lord. You've done for me. We will bless the Lord. You've done for me. We will bless the Lord. You've done for me. We don't have to beg us. We gladly give him praise. We gladly give him glory. We gladly give him hallelujah. We got him on Sunday. You've done for me.
your right hand with me toward him. We chose him because we love him. We love what you have to offer. We thank you for being our pastor. We thank you for being our leader. Thank you for being our guide. Thank you for being the intercessor for us in Jesus name. We love you pastor. Preach the word. Preach what God has given you for each of us. God bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. While you're standing, go hug at least five people. Tell them you love them and you're glad to see them. Get out, get out of your seat and go hug somebody. Hallelujah. Like this, God will perfect that concerning you. Sooner or later, it's going to work in your favor. God's going to turn it around for you. It won't always be like this. God will perfect that concerning you. Now, sooner or later, 
God's gonna turn it in your favor. He's gonna turn it around for you, around for you, around for you, around for you. Turn it around for you. It will always be like this. Hallelujah. God's going to perfect that concerning you. Now sooner or later, God's going to turn it in your favor. Turn it around for you. He's going to turn it around for you. It won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that concerning you. The sooner or later, God's going to turn it in your favor. Turn it around for you. Hey, turn it around for you. It won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that concerning, concerning you sooner or later. He's going to turn it in your favor. He's going to turn it around for you. He's going to turn it around for you. It won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that concern in you. Now sooner or later. He's going to turn it in your favor. He's going to turn it around for you. Turn it around for you. It won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that concerning you. Sooner or later. It's going to turn in your favor. We worship you, Lord. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. I just got to keep on worshiping. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. He's going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. He's going to put a sandal. He's going to turn it around. Hey, for me. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Grab your neighbor's hand and let him know he's turning it around for you. And look at somebody on the other side and tell him he's turning it around for you. Come on, come on, preach to him. Tell him he's turning it around for you. I don't care what it looks like. I heard the word say he's turning it around for you. <laughs> oh, my God. He's I think somebody ought to take that and, and give God the best praise that he's turning it around for you. It ain't going to always look like this. <laughs> you ought to rejoice because sooner or later, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's turning it around for us. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We first like to thank the Lord for being here today. We give him glory. Hallelujah.
Thank God for my wife, Dr. Vincent, and our service conductor, leader, Elder Jared, and her team, and to the choir, amen, all the musicians, to all the elders, deacons, saints, and friends, you can have your seats if you can in the presence of the Lord. I just wondered sometime, I was sitting there thinking about, are we ready for heaven? And I don't mean just being raptured, but will God accept us by the way we come in and praise him? Because in heaven, there's going to be a mighty praise and shout. And I'm just concerned about us even getting there. Are we fit to get there? If we can't praise him down here, he ain't going to accept us in heaven. He ain't going to accept no quiet folks up there. Oh, I wish I had somebody to help me. He ain't going to accept no quiet folks up there. Not the scriptures that I'm reading. He's, he, he, they're going to be talking about the mighty acts that he's done, the, how he redeemed us, and there's going to be a mighty praise in heaven. Ain't nobody going to be sitting down up in heaven with their legs crossed. Just nudge your neighbor and say, send up a shout right now. You can have your seats if you can. I was, I was listening to the choir singing during the offering time, and they were singing, I never shall forget what he's done for me. My God, this is what causes us to shout when we think about what the Lord has done for us. I, I was thinking, I was thinking while they were singing that the Lord waited on me, that he didn't rapture the church while I was in my sins. The things that I was doing, the Lord could have took me out of here and I could have been on my way to hell. So when I think, and I never shall forget, tell your neighbor I won't forget what the Lord has done for me. My God, have your seats and give God one more hand praise while you're sitting. If the Lord say the same, I, I won't be long this morning, but I, I like, I don't have a subject, but I'll make one up here. Uh, tell your neighbor the Lord is still waiting on you. He's still waiting on you. Tell him he's still waiting on you. He's still waiting on you. Waiting you to get some things right. He's still waiting on you. I got this new Bible here and be patient with me. I'm going to read something out of the Amplified. First of all, I want to go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I believe God is ready to start working miracles. I was, I was in my study, and the Lord said, if we can get the people to get their faith where it should be, you're going to really start seeing the miracles. It's not going to be just laying on hands, but the person that needs a miracle, if you can get their faith to the place where they believe God, that God is going to do it for them, we're going to start seeing miracles. My God, slap your neighbor and say, I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see it. Well, we're getting ready to see it. The Lord spoke to me in my, in my study and said, we're getting ready to see some miracles. My God. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read one verse here. Just one verse, verse number seven in the Amplified. By faith, with confidence in God and his word. By faith, with confidence in God and his word. Now, by faith, with confidence in in God and his word. Yeah. 
I, I, all I need is a word from God. Just, just, just nudge your neighbor and tell him, all I need is a word from God. I, I, I got confidence in him. Now, all I need is a word from him. His word. Noah, being warned by God about events not yet seen in reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his family. Everybody that's got a family, go sit by your family for a minute, just for a few minutes here, because I'm, I, am, I am preparing myself, a place for all my family can receive salvation. We should be preparing, amen, all of our children and grandchildren. I don't want none of them to be left. I don't want to go to heaven without them. So I, it's, a, it's something that I have to do myself so God can get all my kids and my grandchildren ready for heaven. By this act of obedience, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, which comes by faith. I, I'm dealing with Noah this morning, but I want you to slip over to 1 Peter, the third chapter. 1 Peter, the third chapter. First Peter, the third chapter, let's read verses 18 through 20. First For Peter, third chapter, verses 18 through 20. And read it slow. Don't, don't go fast here. Let me see. Read this in the Amplified. Uh -huh. For Christ, the Messiah himself, died for sins once for all. For indeed, Christ died for sins once for all. Uh huh. The righteous for the unrighteous. Are you in the Amplified? The just and righteous for the unjust and unrighteous. All right, read. The just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty, uh -huh. that he might bring us to God. In his human body, he was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit, uh -huh. in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Mm -hmm. The souls of those who long before in the days of Noah. Uh -huh. I want you, while we're reading here, in verse 20, I think he's at, I want you to take note there. Once who once were disobedient, when the great patience of God was waiting in the days of Noah. Uh-huh, read. When God's patient waiting during the building of the ark in which a few people, actually eight in number, were saved through water. And baptism, which is a figure of their deliverance, does now also save you from inward questionings and fears, not by the removing of outward body filth, bathing, but by providing you with the answer of a good and clear conscience. And the church shout hallelujah. Now I want to, I want to read this in King James Version and, and say something to you here. For Christ also have 
once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is eight, and take note here, that is eight souls were saved by water. Some people believe that those who perished in the flood had another chance. When they read this scripture, it confuses people, and some people's interpretation is that those who died in the flood got another chance. Some people try to use this scripture to prove that Jesus preached to spirits in prison while he was in the grave. But when we look carefully what the scripture says, we find no grounds or evidence for any such teaching. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all too quiet on me. Say, say no, say no, say no, you, you, they don't get another, they don't, they didn't get another chance. Notice what Peter says. Jesus was put to death in the flesh, but quickened or raised from the dead by the same spirit by which he preached to the spirits in prison through Noah when the ark was preparing. What are you saying, preacher? The same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead preached through Noah while the ark was being built. I, I hope y'all can catch that. Look at your neighbor. Say, 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 the Lord himself preached through Noah. The scripture also tells us how many were saved when the spirit in prison heard this preaching. Eight souls, the scripture says, were saved by water and not a second chance after death. What do you say? While he was preaching through Noah, eight souls were saved. by the Holy Spirit, preached through Noah to those who lived before the flood, to those who were disobedient and who rejected the truth. Consequently, consequently, since these rebellious people refused the message, they died in the flood and are now in hell. Waiting judgment and everlasting punishment in the lake of fire. Uh, quickly, quickly, get John real quick with me. John, just two verses. John, the fifth chapter. Y'all be patient with me and let me talk a few minutes here. John, the fifth chapter, verse 28 and 29. Uh huh. Marvel not after this. For the hour is coming in that which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Uh-huh. All that are in the graves are going to hear his voice. Isn't that amazing that everybody in the grave, when they tell them to get up and come out, they have to get up and come out. Everybody in there going to hear his voice. Read. And shall come forth they that have done good until the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, until the resurrection of damnation. And the church shout hallelujah. Christ between 
his death and resurrection, descended into the area of Hades and Abraham's bosom, removing the Old Testament saints from a temporary paradise, transferring them to the third heaven. He went down and emptied out the pot of Hades where the old saints was and brought them out of there and took them to another place. Well, can you prove that, Pastor? Go to Matthew with me for a few minutes. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Matthew 27, start with verse number 50 and go through 53. Uh -huh. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Yes. From the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were open, and many bodies of saints which slept arose. After Jesus was crucified, the graves were open. And the Lord himself had to be resurrected first because he's the first fruits of them that slept. He had to get up first. After he got up, he brought all the saints from the Old Testament. Emptied out that part of hell where they were at and took them with him. They were seen in the city walking around with him before he took them out of there. All right, finish reading that. Uh-huh and came out of the graves after his resurrection. Yes. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion. And that, an amen, an amen. And they were seen by how many? By many. Luke, the 16th chapter, just two verses here. Just two verses. Just two verses. Mm -hmm. Verses 22 and 23. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Yes. The rich man also died and was buried. Uh huh. And in hell he lift up his eyes. When you die wrong, there is no reversal of you coming out. When the rich man died, he lifted up his eyes in, in hell. Read. Uh huh. Being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in, his, in this flame. And the church shout hallelujah. And let me say this because I don't know if any of y'all ever been Catholic before. But, but the Catholic use this passage as their foundation in 1 Peter for preaching pregatory to their people. They believe that the priest claim he has power to pray dead relatives out of pregatory. But I find no evidence in scripture, once they get there, you can't pray them out of there. Oh, why don't you slap somebody and say, once you get there, you ain't coming out of there. There is no reversal, there is no second chance. Go with us to 2 Peter. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Tell your neighbor God's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He don't want to leave you here. He don't want to leave you here. He wants to take you back with him. He's, been, he's long suffering, waiting for you to repent and get it right so you can go to heaven with him. 2 Peter, the second chapter, verses 4 and 5, and I'm going to skip to 9, verses 4 and 5, 2 Peter 
chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Uh-huh. Read. For God spared not the angels that sinned, uh-huh. but cast them down to hell. Just, just mark your Bible, write down the scripture. Fallen angels are destined to be released from their present hell later on. First place he's done, he sent them to hell. All the rebellious angels, he sent them to hell. Read. God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. Uh huh. To be reserved unto judgment. To be reserved unto judgment. Fallen angels are in hell waiting for judgment then God's going to bring them out and they're going to be judged. Even with the saints, going to help judge them. Then they're going to be consigned to the lake of fire, a place prepared only for the devil and his angels. God never intended for no saint or nobody, no human to go to hell. It was never his intention. Read, read, son. Uh -huh. And spared not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, uh -huh. a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Skip down to verse number nine. Skip down to verse number nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly. I, I, I want you to go slow here. This is so important to me. The Lord knows how to deliver. The Lord knows, uh-huh, and with the Lord's knowledge, is what it's saying here, the Lord have knowledge that involves power. How to deliver the righteous and to punish the wicked. He has knowledge of what he is about to do for the saints and also for the sinner. He has, the Bible said he has knowledge. I, I talk about his attributes. Tell, tell, tell the Lord, he, tell, tell your neighbor, God has attributes that you got to know about, you need to know about. Well, one of them, he's omnipotence. The attribute of God which describes his ability to do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, and how he wants to do it. Well, the Lord also is omnipresent. The attribute of God by virtue of which he fills the universe in all its parts and is present everywhere at once. Songs 139 tell us, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. Wherever you go, God is there and his presence is there. Well, one more attribute is omniscient. <laughs> The attribute which God perfectly and eternally knows all things which can be known, past, present, and future. That's why he said, I'm Alpha <laughs> and Omega. He's the beginning and he is the end. Isaiah picks it up like this, Isaiah 46. 9 and 10, remember, remember the former things of old. God said, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning <laughs> and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure God is saying whatever is going on I know about it whatever is about to happen I know about it what's going to happen in the future I already got it figured out it's already in my council I know what's going to take place if God knows that then I must I must realize I got to rely on his word and make sure that I obey him since God knows everything I, I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to go by what he told me. 
Slap your neighbor and say, don't try to figure it out. Just believe what he told you. He's getting ready to turn it around. Go, 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 go. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Uh, 2 Thessalonians. Second chapter, read verse 3, and I'll skip to 7 and 8. Yes. Uh -huh. Let no man deceive you uh -huh. by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Underline that. That day shall not come. The day of the catching away of the saints is not going to come until first you see folks falling away. Y'all, y'all stay with me. I'm, I'm so disturbed about uh, some bishops now is going off into things that are not scripture. I, I thought it was going to be a lot of lay members, but I see that a lot of preachers now are going off into things that are not scripture. I know y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm talking about, you know, you know when, 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 when she was praying this morning, when she was praying, and I, I heard something while she was praying and God's been dealing with me, when we come to church, all kind of spirits come in here. I heard one, I heard two, I think this morning, I heard witch and warlocks. Last week, I felt that in the church that a witch or warlock was right among us. Y'all getting too quiet. You going to have to be able to discern who's sitting next to you that's that spirit will show itself if you, you 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 got to you got to you got to you got to know you got to know what's sitting next to you because your spirit won't agree with it. it it'll it'll move your own spirit because it's not like your spirit and then and, and you got to start praying right there I, as i was talking about when you got to start interceding because that that spirit don't want the word to go forth it's trying to influence you to sit there and not praise God. You looking at what everybody else is doing. Let that spirit sit there with his legs crossed and his, and his, and his arms folded. And, and you, you better get up and rebuke the spirit and say, and talk to your own self. Sometimes you got to talk to your own self. You sitting there, I, I, I want to be just like, no, I, I can't be like you. If you want to sit there after what God has done for you, let me get up and move myself from you. I want to sit by somebody that the Lord had brought out of darkness slap your neighbor and tell him I, I want to sit by somebody I, it, it, don't, don't feel like you're embarrassed if you say I'm going to excuse myself I'll look the devil right in the face and say excuse me I'm, I'm getting up from here I, if you want to sit there and cross your legs and Hold your mouth closed after what God has done for you. Open your mouth uh, like a trumpet and begin to, to give God praise. Oh, open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide and give God praise because you, we all should have been lost. I, I wish I wish I would talk to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, we're going to have to start praising him. If I have to grab your hand and pull you up. Y'all ain't going to help me. Y'all ain't going to help me. You got a mouth to praise him, man. And you're going to keep that mouth closed. After God then brought you in here on your own two feet. And you got your right mind.
will slap somebody and say, get up from here. Don't you sit there. Well, well I, I hear somebody say, well, Pastor, you just don't know how I feel. Well, you don't, you don't know how I feel. I, 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 was, I, was, I was feeling on myself over there to see if the fever was there. I've been, I've been sick, but I, I, I de, I'm determined that I'm not going to let no bronchitis, no fever stop me from praising God. If I fall out in here, well, praise the Lord, but I'm going to give him praise. And through my praise. While we were taking communion, I was laying hands on myself. Uh, Lord, I'm eating your bread. You said by your stripes. I'm already healed. Tell your neighbor, put your hand, lay your hands on your own self. Lay your hands on your own self. Lay your hands on your own head. God, touch my mind. What are you saying, Pastor? Guard my mind. Don't let no thoughts come in at the wrong thing. He knows what we need. Let me get back. Let me finish up here. Have your seats. Just throw your head back and give God a shout in here. Do it one more time. Throw your head back. Give God a shout. One more time, throw your head back and give God a shout. One more time, throw your head back and give God a shout. One more time, throw your head back. Give God a shout. One more time, throw your head back and give God. One more time, throw your head back and give God a shout. Everybody that was obedient, God said, you just got victory. You just got victory.
Uh, you can have your seats if you can. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Second, I'm, I'm almost through. Give me five minutes. In, in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, I had him read, or we was reading, verse number three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man of sin will not be revealed till first there is a falling away. Verse number seven, real slow here, verse seven, seven. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Uh -huh. Only he who no, now letteth now, will let. Now, iniquity is already at work. Lawlessness and rebellion against divine authority is already at work. I, I was saddened because, and I'm going to get to it in a few minutes, how the enemy now is raging like I have never seen before. I, I can recall, I'm 74, and I can recall when I was a young man in my hometown, we could leave our house and mom would take us over to grandma's house, leave the doors open just to scream. We didn't have air conditioning, so just left the screen door open and go over to grandma's and stay two or three hours, come back and nobody has invaded your house. I don't care what neighborhood you live in now. Y'all done got quiet on me. I'm sure some of y'all, or all of y'all, lock your doors. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong people. How many in here still don't lock your doors? How many of y'all put your alarm systems on? Uh, I thought so. I thought. We're living now, we're living now in dangerous times. And, and here he says in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. I, I know y'all seen on the news where, where this lady lives somewhere in Vinings. She was a doctor, a black lady. Killed her two children and then killed herself then a few days later a young man went in and killed his parents just shot them dead and i told my wife it just seemed like the devil is just raging now and it seems like the people are not making preparation to see god there is a there was a storm, I think, called Dorian out there. And I'm watching the news and all the people in the Bahamas and in Florida going to Home Depot and Lowe's and buying plywood, going there where they got these big bags of sand, <laughs> getting these sand and taking them home. He said, What are y'all doing with that? We're going to make preparation for the storm. 
that is coming. We're going to board up our windows. We're going to put sandbags down by the door so can't no water seek in our houses. We've seen, them, we've seen them at Home Depot on television. They wasn't asking how much the plywood costs. Whatever you're going to live for God, you should ask what it's going to cost me. Whatever the price is, I'm willing to pay it because I'm making preparation to get out of here. Oh, y'all can sit there. Tell your neighbor, I'm making preparation. I, I don't have sandbags and I don't have plywood, but I've got the Holy Ghost. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure my, my family, my family is ready. Whatever the price is. Let me finish down. Just touch somebody. Say, have you made preparation? Are you, are you playing around with your soul? <laughs> God is getting ready to take us out of here. I, I, I can almost feel us getting ready to lift out of here. I, I, don't, I don't know how you feel. I can feel us almost getting ready to lift out of here. It ain't time to play around now. We're getting ready to get raptured out of here. Verse number seven, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The identity of he who now letteth write down is the Holy Ghost in the church who will be taken out of the way in the rapture. You, you better make sure you leave here because you haven't seen any turmoil yet until the Holy Ghost gets out of here. Uh, when the church is raptured, the world will be plunged into lawlessness and chaos for the restrainer now is gone the only reason that we're protected we got a restrainer when the enemy want to come in when 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 When, when the bullet want to come to your house. We have a restrainer. Y'all ain't going to say that thing. Tell your neighbor you got some protection. But if you are left here. And the church is raptured. There is no restrainer to keep the enemy from destroying you. The law is supposed to protect us. But I'm saying the, the work of iniquity is already working. They're shooting the people that we would call 911 to help us. You just see a, a little bit of lawlessness now. When when the restrainer is gone, policemen ain't gonna be able to help you. They shooting them now. There would be no restraining force against lawlessness and sin as exists today, which keeps the Antichrist from arriving 
on the sea. <laughs> then shall, verse number eight, then shall, then shall, that cricket, and then shall the wicked be revealed. When is he going to be revealed? Paul told us a few verses above there. Then shall the wicked be revealed after, after the Holy Ghost presence in the church is raptured or taken out of the way, then the wicked will be revealed. After which Christ will destroy this Satan-filled Antichrist who demands mankind to worship him and God will destroy him by the brightness of his coming. Can I say this? I was listening to our president and, he's, and I feel he's blaspheming, calling himself king of Israel. And he says, I'm the chosen one. Just, it's already working. It's sitting up now. I feel our president want to be worshipped. Let me go on here. Let me go on. Maybe we got somebody in here. To, let, me, let me talk here. Note, note the chronological order here, events, before Christ can come in power. First, a falling away or apostasy or departure from known truth must occur first. Known truth. Can you imagine if people been in church all their lives and no truth? And gonna wait till God get ready to rapture the church and gonna leave the church. Gonna leave God. That's what the scripture says. Says it's got to happen. Followed by the departure of the Holy Spirit as a restraining force during the rapture. Then that man of sin will be revealed. And he will demand to be worshipped in the temple. Finally, finally, the Antichrist will be destroyed by Christ in his second coming, which effectively ends the tribulation. He's going to have seven years that he's going to act up. After that seven years is completed, God is going to destroy him. In the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, is it a tent here? All right. So did you read verse number nine? Uh -huh. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs. You, you know what, what he really wants to do? It's a word in there in the Greek says he really wants to destroy us. John 10, 10 specifies his aim. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Paul talks about this in his, in his, in his chapters here. That his intent was to destroy all of us if he could. But only because of God himself that restrains him from just coming and doing what he wants to do, he cannot do it. We ought to thank God. We ought to thank God. He's keeping this away from us. Can I say it again? We ought to thank God. We ought to stand on our feet and thank God. Come on, Zion. We ought to thank God. Clap your hands, all ye people. 
and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. While your hands is upraised and your eyes closed, Father, we thank you for your people. Those that are teetering today in a valley of decision to trust you or not trust you, to obey you or not to obey you. Don't let them leave here today without coming up here and asking you for help and asking you for strength. Those that have left you, know the word, but have left you, cause them to hunger this morning and come run and say, what must I do? We thank you in advance. We thank you now in advance. Do it for us now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, saints. Thank you so much for joining us today. We certainly hope that you were blessed and encouraged. But now we'd like to invite you and encourage you to give. Amen. Your continued support is much needed and appreciated. Please go to the church webpage, which is www.highpointlive.org. Click on the giving link and sow your tithe and offering. You may also mail your tithe and offering to High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia, 30081. Now, please join us on Wednesday night for Bible class at 7 o'clock as we continue to worship virtually throughout the month of July. We will have a blast from the past. Until then, be encouraged. The Lord loves you, and so do we. God bless you.